Welcome back to Echo Ridge. Today we get the opportunity to once again look at several colonies from the most recent Chaos Crew play along. For those of you not aware, the Chaos Crew is an open invite program that we run on the Discord. Every couple of months we start a brand new seed and everybody starts together. Over the next several days, weeks, and even a couple of months during that playthrough, the players help each other out, they share stories and accomplishments that happened while they were playing in the seed. If you are interested in joining the Chaos Crew play along, head on over to the Discord where you will find plenty of folks to interact with about your playthrough. A special note about the Chaos Crew play along is it's not a competition. It's more of a co-op multiplayer sort of way to playing Oxygen Not Included. In today's video, I'm gonna try to look at even more colonies, but truth be told, we had over 20 submissions. And while I won't be able to take an in-depth look at each one of them, we're at least gonna show a screenshot of every submission. To start off with, I'd like to show you how this seed looked from the very start. And as you may have already noticed, this is a vanilla seed. The asteroid was the Arborea, and the seed had a lot of volcanic activity, mixed boulders, geodes, and large glaciers. And here we are here. This is what all the players found when they first launched into the seed. It's a typical Arborea start. You can see all the wonderful hexalent fruit, even some trees, and a wonderful little pip buddy too. But because it's a vanilla start, the map is, well, pretty big. I mean, it is absolutely gigantic. Some of the highlights that you're going to be able to notice as we take a look at everybody's colonies are these three volcanoes at the very top of the map. We'll also get to see what the players decided to do with the Gravitas installation up here. By default, the seed came with all the world traits, such as the Somnium Synthesizer, the Wonderful Hermit, and the Critter Fluxomatic here towards the bottom of the base. Look at the size of the boulder sitting right beside it. That is a lot of obsidian. Speaking of a lot, there's another grouping of volcanoes down here. Not to mention a huge oil biome and more than a few frozen biomes. That should really help with some early heat management issues. One of my personal favorite things watching the players discover as they were playing along was right above the starting location, there was a small cavern full of oxygen. And when I say full of oxygen, I mean it. This is 496 kilos worth of oxygen in every single tile. Now why the seed spawned with this amount of oxygen, I have no idea. But I'm sure it helped more than one player out. So without further ado, let's check out our first submission. This colony is called The Perfect Burrow and it was submitted by Banana Man. And already, I love the different use of space. It's just a beautiful colony to look at from the zoomed out position. Now in their submission, Banana Man said this is the first time they've made it to late game. And if this is the result of what it looks like the first time Banana Man makes it to the late game, I can't even imagine what it's going to look like later, especially considering it's only cycle 1383. It looks like the duplicates are enjoying some wonderful frost burgers here in the colony. In fact, they have over 1.8 million calories worth of frost burgers and plenty more buns to go with it. Absolutely love the artistic design here in the Great Hall. They were able to do this by using the wedges and the diagonals. And the kitchen and the Great Hall are in what I'm thinking is the main living area. And boy does it pack some decor. Not only to have a wonderful recreation room here with a jukebox, an arcade cabinet, and a couple of soda fountains, they also have a bunch of beach chairs. They were able to get the beach chairs in nominal mode by using two tiers worth of ceiling lights separated by window tiles. Brilliant idea. It looks like Banana Man was lucky enough to also get the bouncy castle bed. I need a bouncy castle bed! In fact, it looks like all 17 duplicates on the colony have bouncy castle beds, and some of them even have some space artifacts in their bedrooms. Over on the other side of the map, we have all the stables and the farms. There are four rows worth of sleetweed farms and a waterweed farm. Beautifully incorporated are the thermo aqua tuner and steam turbine setups running all of these farms and sitting side by side with a couple of Paku ranches. And then there are the hatch ranches. I wish I could tell you for certain what I'm about to show you is what I think it is, but either it's not working 100% correctly or I don't have the right mods installed that Banana Man was using. 
But these numbers here are made out of pixel packs, and they are being controlled by a lot of automation, complete with a slew of ribbon writers and critter sensors. And what I believe is supposed to be happening is depending on how many critters are inside the ranch, it would display that number in the pixel packs. And the reason why I think that is because each critter sensor sort of marks up by one to be able to give you an accurate amount. No matter if that was the intent or not, this is still an impressive feat of automation. It looks like this was the old base before everybody got transplanted to Bouncy Castle Haven. But look at the wonderful use of artwork again. Using the bright diagonals, they were able to make this sort of arrow sort of look. And then over here, using a bunch of charcoal wedges, there's a bunch of polka dots here. Speaking of the volcanoes from earlier, Banana Man decided to put them in an industrial sauna. And note that there are eight steam turbines in here. And then, oh yeah, another 18 steam turbines below it. The reason being is because this sauna is connected to the world's largest heat spike that was crushing through the entire magma biome. And I wish I could tell you this was the pinnacle of this colony, except they were also using a little bit of natural gas. This is seven rows of natural gas generators. In each row, except for this very top one, has 11 generators in it. And all that natural gas is being supplied by a sour gas boiler. And if that weren't enough, and Banana Man said it wasn't, they also installed a regolith melter. And for those of you wondering why you would ever want to go through the process of melting regolith, well, it's because it turns back into magma at 1409 degrees. So despite the colony already having sort of infinite magma from all the volcanoes everywhere, Banana Man said they wanted more. The colony also has a bunch of rockets, all being ran by what is the largest liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen setup that I've personally ever seen. And all of those rockets are spread out throughout the entire star map. Amazing effort and a job well done to Banana Man on their colony. This was an absolute delight to look at. Speaking of absolute delights to look at, this is Grizzly Chaos submitted by Big Old Grizzly. Look at the beautiful use of the Abyssalite around the map. They are obviously a proud supporting member of the RSPA. The colony starts off with not one, but two monuments greeting all the dupes. And apparently, not only does Big Old Grizzly have the bouncy castle beds, they also have the SS Napmaster beds. Each bedroom either has a beautiful marble monument or a pair of artifacts. And speaking of artifacts, there are a lot of them, not only all throughout the bedrooms, but also in the Great Hall. And they are responsible for providing an awesome amount of decor. Speaking of the Great Hall, looks like Big Old Grizzly has the Strawberry Speckle Drywall. In their kitchen, which hilariously enough has a Paku farm built in, they have over 10 million galleries worth of surf and turf. Thanks in part to some stone hatches and some shovels. The rocketry program is being driven by another large-scale liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen setup. But impressively enough, it looks like Big Old Grizzly only used two rockets to go get all of those artifacts. And it's only cycle 1736. One of the coolest things about the colony that I enjoyed is their C minor setup. What happens here is these doors are going to close whenever some meteors come. When the meteors leave, the doors open, and all of that debris falls down here where the miners dig it up and then the auto sweepers start sending it over through these automatic dispensers. Each auto sweeper sends it to the next automatic dispenser until we get way over here where all of that debris drops. And it lands here where we have four thermo aqua tuners and a huge debris chilling system. All that debris is going in at 132 degrees and coming out at six. Big old Grizzly put the systems in place to where if they were too hot it could run back through, but there's no need because all of it is coming out and being dropped off right here. Big old Grizzly also had an industrial sauna and they used the pair of volcanoes to just drop all the magma into a neat little system here where there's a mechanized airlock and every once in a while when it gets cool enough in here, a little bit of magma drops in through here when it solidifies, it pops right out here in the form of igneous rock. The auto sweeper then takes all that igneous rock, spreads it throughout the sauna, 
before it heads into another debris chiller, where it's eventually shipped all the way up here to the storage. The colony also has a wonderful petroleum boiler being supplied by geothermal power. But as impressive as all this is to look at, the most impressive thing about this colony might be the fact that it was a 100% achievement run. That's right, they accomplished every single achievement. So once again, hats off and an amazing job to Big Old Grizzly. Hold on to your hats, because this next one was submitted by The Haunted and is aptly named Chaos Crew. You might at first see a couple of statues and think, oh wow, that's pretty impressive. And you'd be right, because it's 27 statues. Or perhaps maybe you think what's most impressive is the power grid. I mean, yeah, you'd be right there too, because it is quite impressive and absolutely beautiful to look at. Or maybe it's the rocket chimney with more steam turbines than I'm willing to count. I mean, look at it. It just keeps going and going and going. But no, what's most impressive to me is it is cycle 4,475. I don't know what kind of supercomputer the Haunted has that they are running this colony on, but my goodness. We'll start off with a few more highlights. The first being the rather large magma tank, where they're doing a sort of upside down geothermal spike. All three of the volcanoes dumping all their magma, and after 4,000 cycles, it's quite a bit, into this huge tank where this geothermal spike was feeding into a bunch of steam turbines. This was probably actually replaced, who knows how many cycles ago, by all of these steam turbines. Remember during the last colony we were taking a look at artifacts? Well, the haunted said, hold my tea. Not only have I never gotten to cycle 4,475, in fact, I don't think I've gotten past three, but apparently the haunted decided to get all the artifacts that ever existed in the history of time. They even found one that I don't think I've ever seen before in the modern art artifact. Now, if you ever had late game goals and decide, well, I'm going to collect something, I guess artifacts is one way to do it. What I would like to know, though, is why this one teapot is tilted. How does that happen? And just so you didn't think that this was all the artifacts, nope, they keep going. And going. And going. Oh, look, there's more artifacts over here, too. And on top of all the artifacts, Apparently, Big Old Grizzly also has the Bouncy Castle Bed. Seriously, am I the only one that doesn't have the Bouncy Castle Bed? Hilariously enough, because this colony's been going on so long, this one small kitchen has managed to make over 50 million calories. Most of it in surf and turf. Like the other two colonies, Haunted did decide to use these two volcanoes on the lower left for their industrial sauna heat. Watch this. Did everybody just see the teapot come out? Well, that's because as the rockets land and they drop their artifacts down here, they get pushed over through these doors one by one, where they all end up landing here. And I can't even tell you how many artifacts are in that pile. And it sort of makes sense because the Haunted has 28 rockets. Yes, 28 rockets going to all parts of the star map. They just keep going and going <laughs> and going. And all of them are being fueled by liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. Oh, here comes one now. Perfect landing, absolutely. And if you're curious, this is now the largest liquid oxygen tank I've ever seen. And hilariously enough, the liquid hydrogen is way over here. The Haunted has reminded me that I have no idea how to actually play this game, and I am really surprised people are still watching. Firm handshakes to The Haunted, and thank you very much for this submission. Now, does anybody want an artifact? I'm going to start putting these up for sale. P.S. Thank you for the hermit dupe. This next submission is called The Hot and Cold Chaos Colony, and was submitted by Borderline, a proud member of the RSSA. And apparently Borderline is not running a supercomputer like Haunted and did the very smart thing of starting to put tiles all throughout the side of the colony. And I can tell you from at least my experience, I'm still getting 60 frames per second even though the colony is 1900 cycles old. Just a tip for all of you in case your potato is not able to keep up anymore. Borderline is also using the C-minor system, 
So let's find out where theirs get dropped. Looks like right here. And then it goes into this wonderful conveyor loader where all of the regolith is being fed to a bunch of shovels. There are 34 shovels in here. And what's amazing is the colony is primarily not even on barbecue. In fact, their primary food is spicy tofu, which is really quite impressive considering they have the capability to feed about 50 duplicates off of barbecue. For those of you wondering, there are 523 critters sitting in this room. And because of those tiles being built on the side of the colony, even when I'm hovered over this room, I'm still sitting at above 50 frames per second. Oh, there they are. The wonderful gnaw sprouts. Some folks in the audience just started chanting the curried beans song. We also have a wonderful pinch of pepper plant farm here. After all, they are needed for the spicy tofu. Here's their main living colony. It looks like Borderline was lucky and was able to get the rainbow striped drywall. That's another one I don't have. And here's the micro musher creating all the tofu. And then this gas oven takes all that tofu and turns it into spicy tofu. Please tell me with all those pinch of pepper plants, there's a tea station somewhere here. The duplicates need their tea. Well, I don't think they get any tea, but they do have some wonderful beach chairs here. There it is. It says espresso, but clearly it's tea. They also have a hot tub, a mechanical surfboard, a jukebox, and an arcade cabinet. And oh my goodness, where do I get a green goddess statue? Borderline also has the nap master bed. A couple other things I wanted to highlight on this colony is a very interesting steam vent tamer that looks like it's actually controlling some heat using mechanical doors. What an ingenious little system here. It's even making use using automation ribbons in the ribbon reader. Note now with all of the doors shut, each steam turbine is only using one input. What an ingenious steam vent tamer. It looks like they're in the process of starting to use these volcanoes. Ah, yes, there it is, the wonderful NAFTA soft lock. Warning, your experience may vary. They also have a sauna over here surrounding this one volcano using the same sort of mechanical door trick under the steam turbines. And in this case, depending on the temperature inside the sauna, depends on how many of these doors open, which is once again an ingenious way to control heat or in other words, control how long these steam turbines can run. Borderline is also using a sour gas boiler, and impressively, this is the very first time they've ever made one. And the thermals on it are looking absolutely perfect. The crude oil is coming in, pretty much instantly flashing, into petroleum and then right into sour gas. The sour gas then ekes over here, where it is then chilled, where once again it flows through these airflow tiles, turning into liquid methane and sulfur. The liquid methane is then brought into this side and turned into natural gas, where once again we have a cheeky amount of natural gas generators providing power for the entire colony. I think my favorite part of this colony is the clean implementation, and it seems to be a sort of aesthetic that Borderline was shooting for. They're only using one rocket. Now that wasn't the only rocket, because Borderline also made it out to the Temporal Terror. So while I'm personally not a user of infinite liquid storages, Borderline does make it look good. Like, I don't know exactly what I would ever need 154 million kilos worth of polluted water, but it's nice to have it when you need it. So well done to Borderline, and thank you again for the very clean submission. This next submission is Soul Oracle's Chaotic Crew, submitted by Soul Oracle, another member of the RSSA. Finally, someone else who only has the race car bed. The first thing I noticed on Sora Oracle's colony was the fact that the industrial sauna is sitting in space. I absolutely love that. We have a bunch of thermo aqua tuners in here and, well, a lot of regolith. And all of that regolith is heading over once again to a shovel farm, except this time they're making good use of all that barbecue as the colony has almost 40 million calories and over 10 million calories worth of surf and turf alone. I also see 20 million calories worth of cooked seafood, so I'm gonna have to find that Paku farm here soon. Now, Solaroko's using a little bit of a different system to manage their meteors. All the meteors crash down, they hit the bunker doors, the bunker doors open, like we've all seen, but then 
it all lands on these mechanized airlocks. The robo miners dig everything out, and then all the debris goes inside these open mechanized airlocks, where they are using just a little bit of automation with some buffer gates, which just push all of the debris over one by one. And it keeps going all the way over. It probably takes a month of Sundays for all that to happen, but once it finally does, it is dropped into here, where this auto sweeper then picks it up and starts rotating it all through the sauna. One of my favorite things about doing this series is seeing how different people attack the exact same problem with different methods. You got it, little door. Just keep pushing the debris over, one by one. Solar Oracle's making good use of solar panels that probably light up like a Christmas tree whenever these doors and bunker doors are open. And all that power is going into a bunch of jumbo batteries that are being kept cool by smart use of Weezworts. But a colony of this size probably needs some more power. So they have a bunch of petroleum generators and natural gas generators with some coal generators for a convenient backup. Here's the Paku farm. And it looks like they are using a wonderful Paku plank. And based on how my frames just dipped, there's going to be a lot of fish in here. Yes. 886 fish to be exact let's go away from that room because it's causing the computer to bog down and solar oracle is doing something that i need to get a little bit better about in my playthroughs and that is using chlorine to its maximum effectiveness here we have a bunch of dash of salt vines we also have balm lilies being tended to by sweepies we're also growing a bunch of pinch of pepper plants we're also getting some phosphorite because the Dracos are allowed to eat on the bomb lilies. I don't know what this dupe did wrong, but apparently their camping cot, which by the way, this is the first time I've ever seen the camping cot, is inside the chlorine farm. Soul Oracle has a very nice use of space at 39 duplicates in the colony, which means they needed more than one spawn. And they're built into the side of a giant water tank that's being used to keep all the oxygen cool as all the oxygen comes out of these bombs and then goes through these tanks. And right under it, there's a gold volcano tamer. All right, with all those pinch of pepper nuts, where's the tea station? How many times do I gotta say it? The duplicates need their tea. I don't think there's any tea. But to make it a little bit better, the duplicates do have access to an arcade cabinet and a couple of beach chairs. Soul Oracle also has the rainbow stripes. They also have the magma diagonals as well. I like all these private bedrooms because all of their backgrounds look just a little bit different. It gives it a really nice look. I also like the Soul Oracle is using a two-tiered Great Hall. I need to start using these more in some of my colonies with more dupes. Speaking of which, thank you for the dupe. The last thing I wanted to highlight on Soul Oracle's colony was their geothermal power using the volcanoes. What might be most impressive about this colony is the fact that this is the first time Soul Oracle's using geothermal power. It's also their first time in vanilla space. I like how they named the volcanoes. That way, they're easy to find in the geotuners, where this volcano and this volcano are both being geotuned to produce more magma. That magma comes in through here, where it has a nice little blade that barely touches the mechanized airlock, which injects heat into the window tiles just like on the other side, that powers all of these steam turbines, creating a bunch of power for the colony. You may notice that in my own playthroughs, I like systems that are easy to install, are efficient and effective, and this system checks all those marks. So I may steal this one in the future. And before we leave here, we're gonna go ahead and correct one thing in Soul Oracle's colony by deconstructing this statue right here. We'll move the arcade cabinet over by one and put in the tea station. Look at this. We have beautiful clean water right here. And now, Duplicant Echo can enjoy their tea. Thanks, by the way, for the duplicant. Look at how excited Scarpath is to finally get some tea. I'm glad we were able to make that happen. All kidding aside, well done on this beautiful looking colony. And thanks for the submission to Soul Oracle. Our next colony submission is by Crystal Lilac, and it is aptly named Chaos Crew. And already, I love the look of this colony. Crystal Lilac says, if I don't need the space, why use it? 
They are also using the method of filling in the sides of the colony with a bunch of tiles. And what's cool is they don't even need to do that over on this side because the asteroid is pretty much untouched. So despite this being a very large vanilla sized map, the entirety of the colony pretty much fits into this space right here. I always love looking at minimalistic designs like this. The first thing I noticed was all the natural agriculture inside the colony. Not only do we have a bunch of naturally planted arbor trees, with some sweepies doing a bang up job of keeping the place going, they also add a bunch of dust caps, bristle blossoms, and even some mealwood. And in case you were wondering, I'm sure all these flower pots were actually sitting on tiles, but because they may have used, for instance, a natural tile mod or something, and I don't have the mod, it doesn't exactly show up. It's been a while though since I've seen the old mealwood inside the flower pot trick. But there's even more agriculture over here where we have a couple of pip ranches and some Dreco ranches. We even have a squeaky puff ranch. And of course, Crystal Lilac once again has the bouncy castle beds. One of my favorite parts of this colony is the sauna. There's a water geyser in here that's erupting at 95C. And what Crystal Lilac is allowing the water geyser to do is just erupt whenever it wants to. And all of that water comes splashing down past all these ethanol distillers, keeping them chilled, by the way, along with petroleum generators. And all that water ends up down here. Every once in a while, this mechanized airlock opens, which drops more water down here, keeping the batteries cool. It also passes a bunch of hydrogen generators till we finally get to a bunch of buffer tanks where the water is finally allowed to drip through this one mesh tile, falls all the way down here, where it pulls up and then starts falling down here, comes over here, where it finally lands into a wonderful tank. And the tank stretches the entirety of the bottom of the colony. This system reminds me of something like the Mousetrap board game. Look at all the geotuners doing some work. We have five geotuners on the gold volcano itself, another five on the chlorine vent, and two on the saltwater geyser. And all those geotuners are geotuning the volcano for a couple of reasons. One, because I'm sure Crystal Lilac just wanted some more gold, but also because it's connected to a cheeky little system here where they are melting phosphorite. Echo, why would somebody want to melt phosphorite? Well, let me show you. Once you melt the phosphorite, it turns into liquid phosphorus. And that liquid phosphorus is brought down into this chamber here. And then when you cool the liquid phosphorus, it turns into a solid refined phosphorus. That refined phosphorus is then scooped up and put in this conveyor loader, where it then makes the long trip all the way back down through the colony, bypassing a few different bridges where it'll end up in this wonderful storage here. But now that we have refined phosphorus, there's typically two things people might want to do with it. One, feed it to some abyss or azure bugs, or, and in Crystal Lilac's case, geotuning the gold volcano, which requires refined phosphorus. So the whole system's like a self-licking ice cream cone, because the heat from the gold volcano is what's melting the phosphorite. And then in turn, is eventually geotuning the gold volcano. What a wonderful system here, Crystal Lilac. I really enjoyed following the phosphorite all around the base before it eventually makes its way back to the geotuners. Which, by the way, they are using a very ingenious system because the geotuners send out a green signal whenever they're erupting. Those signals are then being added into an AND gate being controlled by a switch to actually enable and disable the geotuner itself and that way they're not geotuning an inactive volcano. Another thing I wanted to highlight of Crystal Lilacs is the wonderful barracks. As you can see, all the duplicants, who also have bouncy council beds, they also have a bunch of wonderful paintings. Oh my goodness, I don't have a self-self-self-portrait. And then each level of the barracks has its own bathroom system. And then to cap it all off, all the duplicants here get soda and tea. Thanks again to Crystal Lilac for submitting this colony. It is a pleasure to look at and reminds me of what would happen if the duplicants were actually dwarves and they just wanted to live inside their hole. And if that colony was a perfect one for dwarves, this one is a perfect colony for ants. 
This is the perfect dump submitted by S. Doll Carol. And yes, they are a very proud member of the RSPA. Now, just by looking at this colony, you might think that it's not very old. Except, the perfect dump has been around for 1600 cycles. But don't think for a second this is not a full-featured colony. You have a couple fully functional power plants, one of them running off of natural gas, the other running off of coal. We have an oxalite refinery, a glass forge, even an oil refinery being supplied by all the oil naturally found on the planetoid. And in case you're wondering where a perfect location for some wood burners, well, how about right here in this tiny little cave? <laughs> There's also a power control station. That way we can get the most power possible out of the wood burners. The colony even has a complete transit tube access system that goes all the way from the oil biome, has stops off at the oxygen facility, the primary power station, that is also sitting next to a wonderful Paku ranch. And then there's another access point way up here, right next to a hydrogen vent tamer that is feeding into a couple of hydrogen generators. And then the tube system goes further up to some petroleum storage and a petroleum generator just randomly sitting up here. Everything I look at in this colony just makes me smile. Up here in the space biome, there's a lot going on as well. First, we have some more power being provided by solar. And while the colony no longer has a rocket, it used to. And that rocket must have been supplied by liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen because Carol also made it to the temporal tear. And then we have another sea miner system where all of this regolith is being picked up by a wonderful sweepy. And the sweepy is being adorned with some rainbow striped drywall. The regolith then gets picked up by this auto sweeper and then is dropped off right here and fed to the hungry mouths of the Shovels, where they eventually get turned into none other than Frost Burgers. That's right, the colony where you can barely tell that there's a colony in it has 11 million calories to include 3.6 million calories worth of Frost Burgers. There's also a Dreco Ranch sort of tucked away inside of this biome here, which is right next to a virtual planetarium, because of course it is. The Duplicans here enjoy a simple life, they have wonderful lab cots and bathrooms adorned with aquatic mosaic tiles. Even a couple of showers where they're able to get their tootsies tickled. Of course, I don't think I've ever seen carpeted shower rooms. I for one definitely don't want to put my tickled tootsies on that wet carpet. There's a simple great hall here that is only serving nine duplicates. You can tell it used to be serving ten before that duplicate went through the temporal tear. That's right, this entire colony was made with only 10 duplicates. I was coming to look to see how they were keeping all those calories chilled. And they are using a deep freezer system. Being chilled by a thermal regulator that is being kept cool by a nice little cooling loop that's sitting next to the Moopolian Bonifart. There's also a nature reserve right here that whenever the duplicates want to go out through these suits, they get blasted with the plus six morale. We even have domestically maintained oxyferns down here. In fact, because so little was actually destroyed in the creation of this colony, there's oxyferns everywhere. That's the entire carbon dioxide deletion system. I also want you to take a look at how much of the planetoid was actually explored. There is little tunnels everywhere, like this one that goes all the way up here. I have no idea what Carol was after up here, but it may have just been to reveal the area. And not only did they explore the entire planetoid, make it through the temporal tear, they also managed to free the hermit. All the meanwhile, barely even disturbing the planetoid. What an absolute treat to see how Carol did this. Thank you much for the submission and allowing everyone to see what truly is possible in keeping with the standards of the RSPA. Our last colony is actually a colony of first. This is Ordnance Headquarters, submitted by Haha ha Garrets. And this colony represents the very first time they've sent a rocket to space, their first industrial brick, their first time coring out an entire planetoid, and their first 1000 colony cycle. Now, Garrets is an obvious member of the RSSA, as not only they've strip mined everything out, but they've also gone through the process of removing all the ladders. This is another important tip for late game colonies, 
and will keep your frames higher because the duplicants just can't travel to as many spaces. Carrots also managed to free the Hermit. They also have their hands on some wonderful Visco gel, where they're using a soft lock and are starting to work inside this volcano here. I'm not exactly sure what they're up to, but they have dropped a bunch of mafic rock. In fact, 10 tons of mafic rock sitting on this metal tile, and it's now superheated to over 1300 degrees. But fear not, they did manage to tame both of these major volcanoes on the left side of the colony and place them inside a very large industrial sauna. And the size of this was pretty important. With two volcanoes, you would normally need more than just six steam turbines. But because there is almost a thousand kilos worth of steam pressure in here, and it's taking up all this space, the six steam turbines can handle it just fine. It looks like they also tamed this chlorine vent. I wonder where they're sending all that chlorine. All the way down here, where it's joined up with this chlorine vent for a wonderful squeaky puff ranch, which they're using to make more bleachstone. Why bleachstone when you already have that much chlorine? Well, because they're geotuning this polluted water vent, which is emitting at 11 kilos per second with an average output of 3.7 kilos per second. That's a lot of water. Okay, I don't get it, but I'm gonna try to figure it out. That's a lot of morbs, all being created by this outhouse. Maybe it's for polluted oxygen? Oh, I see now. We're taking all that polluted oxygen, deodorizing it, and keeping a dense puff inside this ranch to make oxalite. What an ingenious little system. From just one dirty outhouse, Carrots is creating oxalite for the colony. That brings us to the main colony itself, which is a very large installation in the dead center of the planetoid, where, of course, they also have bouncy castle beds. All 17 duplicants on this colony have their own private bedroom, complete with a nice duplicant gym, stone hatches, oak shells, and shovels. We also used to have some Drecos here with some mealwood, along with a random puffed here and there, all combining for a very eclectic menu. We have some omelets on the menu, then we have some barbecue and cooked seafood, which are then being combined to make some surf and turf. And oh my goodness, why is the queen in the deep freezer? How do you even do that? I'm pretty sure you can't put a duplicate inside the conveyor loader, which means that carrots had to put the queen in the deep freezer as it was being constructed. What have you done, Carrots? Okay, queen, wake up. It's time to come out now. We also have a couple of interesting tamers that I want to point out. This gold volcano is being cooled by two steam turbines, but the steam turbines are being kept cool by wheeze warts inside of retro flower pots. We also have a bunch of oil being produced, Although it does not look like they have tapped these yet, but I have a feeling they were just gonna start filling the entire area up with oil. Okay, Carrots, what are you doing over here? Underneath the Gravitas building, there's a bunch of steam turbines. Oh, I see it. They use these steam turbines to solidify all the magma that was coming out of this volcano. So far, it's down to 580 degrees. And once again, the steam turbines are being kept cool by wheeze warts and flower pots. We also have a couple of mission control stations and a bunch of power transformers once again being cooled by wheeze warts and flower pots. And it looks like Carrots is trying to vacuum out the entire planetoid. There's a couple of gas pumps sending all the gases out to the vacuum of space. This is going to cause some problems because wheeze warts can't cool in a vacuum. But I'd be willing to bet that Carrot had a lot more plans with this colony. We also have another hydrogen vent, except this one's being tamed in a very interesting way. There are three steam turbines up here, cooling off the hydrogen along with three aqua tuners that looks like they were being used to make a bunch of liquid hydrogen. Very cool use of the hydrogen vent. I don't know who this queen is, but it's not the queen in the freezer. In fact, they have their own paradise. They have a beach chair with a bouncy castle bed, their own refrigerator, their own bathroom, an arcade cabinet, and a jukebox. Maybe this is what Carrots was doing to make up for the fact that the previous queen ended up in the deep freezer. I can't wait to hear the story behind the two queens. 
Now, during this outro, you're going to be seeing some other colonies submitted by other members of the Chaos Crew Play Along. And if you're interested in joining the next Chaos Crew Play Along, head on over to our Discord, where I'm sure you're not only going to hear Carrots tell us about the two queens, but you can also find the Chaos Crew Play Along channel. The seed is normally active for about two months, and then if you want, you can submit your colony for consideration in a video just like this. I'd like to throw a special thanks out to both Queen Calero and Gabby Gabs, who put a lot of work into the Chaos Crew Play Along to include preparing all these save files and sending them over to me, where it is my pleasure to be able to show you some of these great colonies. Now, the colonies chosen for today's episode weren't for any one specific reason or another. We try to alternate whose colony we we're showing and if we thought a colony had something special going on. But regardless if your colony was shown or not, thank you very much for submitting it and for playing along with the Chaos Crew. Until next time, happy gaming, and I'll talk to you soon.